show of hands, is anyone here diagnosed with ADHD? All right. I'm glad there was at least one person, because according to the CDC, 9.8% of children aged 3 to 17 are diagnosed with ADHD. It's an extremely common mental condition and one that I have myself. And that's why today I'll be talking about ADHD, how it's diagnosed, how it affects life, and how it's treated. First off, ADHD is not self-diagnosable. If you think you may have ADHD, you should consult a primary care physician. Um, all right. From the NHS, the diagnosing process may involve a physical exam to rule out other possible causes for symptoms and interviews with you and significant people in your life. Additionally, in the past 10 years, the use of EEGs have been used to diagnose ADHD. This device requires you to sit down at rest for approximately 10 minutes as it measures your brain waves. So what's the cause of ADHD? As said in an article by Healthline, no one really knows exactly what causes a person to have ADHD. But one widely accepted theory is a decrease in dopamine production in the brain. I'm pretty certain this, common, this is common knowledge, but just in case you don't know, dopamine is a chemical that is responsible for pleasure and reward. And what's make you, it what's make, it what, it's what makes you feel good when you eat food and when you accomplish a task, stuff like that, it gives you the motivation to do that. Um, whether or not this is the main cause of ADHD, the mental condition brings out a number of symptoms that can hinder a person's act, hinder many aspects of a person's life. These symptoms can, can be divided into two categories, and those categories come from what ADHD stands for. The AD part stands for attention deficit. According to the CDC, this means being easily distracted and, oft and often avoiding tasks that require mental effort over a long period of time. I, for one, am experiencing, I was experiencing this exact problem when I was writing this very script. In fact, those first few sen the first few sentences of this paragraph took me about 45 minutes to write because I simply could not focus. In that time, I ate a bunch of frosted mini wheats direct directly from the box, a bunch of oyster crackers, drank a Dr. Pepper, watched mindless YouTube videos, and tried having entirely unrelated conversations with my mom. Thank you, mom, by the way. If you weren't there for me, I would not have finished this speech, I'll be perfectly honest. During those 45 minutes, I also fidgeted around a lot, but that's a symptom of the HD part, hyperactive disorder. As said in the same CDC page I mentioned earlier, some symptoms of this category include talking excessively, butting into conversations, and fidgeting, tapping, or squirming frequently. And before I inevitably forget, you may have also heard of the term ADD, attention deficit disorder, so ADHD without the hyperactive part, but this term is outdated and has been a shock for a shockingly long time, actually. According to an article from Very Well Mind, the term was phased out all the way back in 1987, as the hyperactivity symptoms were considered to be an important feature of ADHD. Now you may remember from just a minute ago how I said that while I was distracted writing this, I ate a bunch of food. Frosted mini wheats, whatever, here they are. Frosted mini wheats, oyster crackers, and Dr. Pepper. What was that about? Well, as it turns out, I had forgotten to take my medication that day. I'm prescribed, to treat my ADHD, I'm prescribed 30 milligrams of Adderall. Oh, sorry, there it is. Um, it's uh, daily in the morning that I usually take it, and uh, XR stands for extended release, by the way. It just means that it's the pill's designed to dole out the 30 milligrams throughout the day rather than just all at once. And Adderall is a stimulant, as stated by the library of National Library of Medicine. Stimulants increase ex extracellular dopamine levels in the brain, meaning that for people with ADHD, it, helps the, it, helps wor it works to help the brain produce dopamine levels closer to that of an average, pers average person. You see, that's why I was eating so much before I took my meds. All that binge eating gave me the dopamine that my brain was lacking, so I was sort of, that's sort of a symptom of that. So, in a way, by eating all that food, I was self-medicating my ADHD in place of my actual medication, so not really. But medication doesn't solve ADHD, it only just slightly reduces those symptoms. Living with ADHD can still be a struggle. According to the CDC, 33% of children, okay, 33% of children with ADHD have anxiety and 17% have depression. Constant pressure from school and work to focus when it seems like you're just unable to can be stressful and lower your self-esteem. Um, don't ask what that image means. Um, that's why I'd like to end off this speech by taking a quick look at some useful strategies 
to help people with ADHD focus better using an article from the conversation. Admittedly, I should be taking some of this advice that this article gives. One of these pieces of advice is to have a simple organizational system. This is something that I would probably benefit from by focusing on more, but honestly, I've always shied away from it just because of how daunting it seems to add to my routine. And on the other hand, some advice that this article gives that I have used myself is to just limit distractions while you work. A recurring pattern that always happens when I have a big project is that it's always hard, it's always starting them that's the hardest part. Once I get into the flow of working on it, I tend to get sucked in and finish it pretty much all in one sitting. But before I get into that flow state, it's in constant uphill battle to not get distracted by other more entertaining things. So by putting my phone on the internet serb and closing unneeded tabs, I can make it, I can make, I can make it to that transition and into the zone and it just makes it a bit more feasible to do that. So in this speech, I've covered a multitude of subjects regarding ADHD, including diagnosis, symptoms, and treating it. I hope you've learned something today about this common mental disorder. I wish all my fellow seniors a good luck after high school. I wish the juniors a good end to the school year. And I thank Ms. Durbin for putting up with me the full school year. Thank you.